Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, September 28th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, we've been tracking Invest 97L as it approaches the Eastern Caribbean, and as of this afternoon, uh, the recon plane went in there, found westerly winds on the south side, and a closed circulation, and so this has been upgraded to Tropical Storm Matthew, and this actually has some pretty strong winds with it. Uh, recon found uh, up to 60 mile per hour winds near the surface on the northern side. Uh, often these waves, when they come in, have a, a big assist from the fast trade winds on their north sides, and that really allows the wind to speed up. Even though the system, in a large scale sense, is still pretty weak, the winds are still pretty strong here, and uh, so this has been battering portions of the Lesser Antilles for a good portion of today. Uh, the center of the system is just west of St. Lucia right now, and you might get a better picture from the radar over here. And you can see it spinning away right here. Here's St. Lucia, there's Martinique, there's Dominica, and the uh, spin that you can see is somewhere in this area here. So it's just to the west of the island chain now and moving about due west at this point. No real north or south component to it at the moment. Uh, you can see that it's been getting a little bit closer wrapped into the convection on its eastern side. We can see this on the visible satellite pretty well. Uh, it looks less sheared than yesterday, less tilted. It is still tilted a little bit with most of the convection still on the east side and the mid-level center perhaps a little bit northeast of where the surface center is over here. But it is closer to vertically stacked today and it has become much better organized in appearance. However, it doesn't seem to be strengthening that much. This was the recon plane uh, mission earlier today. Uh, there's a new one coming in there now. As, after this video is over, uh, there will be a new mission flying around in there, but the, uh, the mission from a few hours ago, uh, there's where it found the center just off of St. Lucia a few hours ago. You can see all the strong winds in red and purple here that it found near 60 miles per hour uh, east of uh, Dominica and Martinique. But uh, the pressure was about 1,000, 8,007 uh, on some of these surface observations in the islands during that time. And if we look at the surface plot now, we really don't see much change. 1,009 in Martinique, 1,007 in uh, St. Lucia. And this really hasn't fallen during the course of the day. And this doesn't seem to indicate that the system is really intensifying at the moment. In addition, if we look back at the radar for a second, again, you can see the center of circulation somewhere in here. But watch closely some of these uh, showers coming across Guadeloupe from right to left. You'll see them form, and then you'll see them fizzle out here, essentially evaporating on the west side of Guadeloupe. This indicates to me that there is dry air in the mid or low levels off to the west of the system still. And you can kind of see how most of the convection is really on the eastern side. The western side, not so much. And so we're seeing some of these thunderstorms go up and then come down as the updrafts encounter dry air and then get cooled via evaporation and then suffocate. And that's why these thunderstorms fizzle out here. So this indicates dry air and something that Matthew may struggle with for a, a little while yet. And so this may limit intensification in the short term. There's also this uh, trade wind flow that we keep mentioning in the Central Caribbean, and uh, it's, it's not that friendly to weaker systems. Once this becomes a pretty mature cyclone, it ceases to matter. But while this is still kind of a weak tropical storm, this is a less friendly environment in general, just in terms of the low-level flow. And then again, there could be some dry inflow off of Venezuela as well if this tracks a little bit farther to the south. Uh, so it may uh, these little things combined together may limit how fast it can strengthen, over the next day or two. And then after that, conditions may get more favorable for it as it gets farther into the Caribbean here, and we could see a strengthening hurricane at some point in a few days. Now the forecast for this uh, continues to have some question marks, but what we know for now is that this will continue to bring tropical storm conditions to portions of the Lesser Antilles for the next several hours into tonight. There is a tropical storm watch up for uh, Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire as the system is expected to track uh, just about due west into the Central Caribbean and could be far enough south uh, if it takes a little dip here, as it is forecast to by some models, that it could get close enough to these islands to bring tropical storm conditions to that region. So there is a watch up there, and at the coast of Colombia here along the tip of this peninsula may also have to keep an eye out. And then beyond that, a turn to the north uh, continues to be expected, and this is what that looks like. Uh, on the GFS right now, this is a 500 millibar map in the black contour showing the hurricane down here. Uh, by this time, it is a, a strong hurricane on this model. And then we have this ridge that we've been talking about to the north, and it has its western edge set up 
near the Bahamas. And so there's, there's an alleyway to the north through which the storm moves on the GFS, and it moves right near the Windward Passage, near Haiti, Cuba, and just east of Jamaica here. Now what I'm showing you on this map, this is actually a trend map. Uh, you can kind of read the title there if you want. This is 500 millibar trend in color. And so what this means is that blue indicates that heights are falling uh, as new model runs come in at the same time. So the model is trending to lower heights here. And then red indicates that the model is trending toward higher heights here. Uh, and what I want to draw your attention to is the couplet here between red in the Western Atlantic and blue over the uh, Midwest. And what this shows you is that this upper level low has been shifting west over time on the GFS runs, and this ridge has been strengthening and shifting west on the GFS runs. It's subtle, but it's there. This green line indicates to you that these uh, trends are statistically significant in this region of the world. And so gradually what this tells you is the GFS has been shifting this ridge west along with this upper low. And so this could uh, force the track of this storm a little bit farther west over time. And the GFS has trended a little bit farther west. Uh, originally, it was over the Dominican Republic. Now it's over the Windward Passage. And if this trend continues, uh, it may still shift a little bit farther west yet. It's hard to say, but that's the current trend in the GFS. It is shifting a little bit more toward the Euro, which has been farther west during this time. Uh, but this just is just one example of how the model is inconsistent over time. The forecast changes, as we can see from this map, it's not always the same, and this is some of the uncertainty that we're dealing with in the forecast. If we take a closer look at day four here, this is Sunday morning, 500 millibar height and anomaly on the GFS. There's Matthew. Here's that ridge we were just talking about. And again, the GFS has a stronger storm than some other models here. It is one of the strongest models currently, and thus it slows down. And the reason it does that is because the trade winds are always strongest uh, in the lower atmosphere and then they weaken with height and when the storm gets stronger it feels a deeper steering flow so it feels a weaker steering flow in the middle atmosphere and slows down and then begins to turn to the north sooner than the European and so it comes up through the windward passage here and that turn occurs sooner on Sunday and Monday of next week uh, than it does on the Euro, which at the same time on Sunday, you can see is substantially farther south. You can see the difference between the two storm positions here. And uh, this difference with a weaker storm farther south on the Euro means that it's waiting a longer time to take a track into this weakness around the western part of the ridge. The reason this matters is because we're dealing with a trough in the Gulf of Mexico here and a ridge to the east, and the evolution of these two is going to continue well into next week. And depending on where the hurricane is, uh, that changes the steering flow. If it's uh, fast, like the GFS says, in turning to the north, then it's easy to see that this trough will allow a turn directly to the north east of Florida. That makes a lot of sense here. However, if the, if the European is farther south like this or gets farther west like some of its ensemble members, this trough has a chance to dig in and then start backing away to the southwest a little bit, this ridge has a chance to build in a little bit more, and so tracks can end up a little bit farther west toward Cuba or somewhere in this area. And that's where some of the uncertainty lies right now. Uh, if you go into the longer term, uh, the ridging can start building in over the United States as well. After this trough leaves, this one backs away to the southwest, and then this ridge builds in, and you can get some uh, very different tracks in this general region of the world, and we continue to see that kind of spread on the European ensemble. This is the mean of the ensemble at day eight, so this is well into the middle part of next week, and this is not one model run, so this is not literally showing you a 1,003 millibar storm. This is the average of 51 ensemble members, and what this shows you in the mean is that there's this elongated area of low pressure. So that tells you that there are some tracks out in here where the GFS is, there are some tracks closer to Florida and the Bahamas, and there are some tracks even in the Gulf of Mexico here on the European ensemble. And this usually gives you a good indication of what the possible set of outcomes are, and this shows you a large area of potential places where Matthew could be in eight days. This is just a set of possibilities, and it's a large set, and since you can tell that it's such a large set, that means we are not very certain about where Matthew could be next week. We are pretty confident in a turn to the north somewhere near Jamaica, Cuba, and Haiti during the next five or six days. But after that point, where does it go? Does it go right out to sea? Does it come up the eastern seaboard? Does it go into Florida? Does it go into the Gulf? Pretty hard to tell still at this point. And as I've reiterated, 
over the last few days of videos, we have many, many days during which this pattern is going to evolve, and we're going to get some recon flights during the next few days that will sample the conditions out ahead of the storm. So we'll get a better idea of uh, what this ridge is doing off to the north. And once we have more information, the forecast may become more confident. But right now it is not very confident. So in general, at this point, uh, we're just watching for the Greater Antilles and the northern coast of South America. This is the NHC official track showing again that westward track strengthening to a hurricane during the next three days. Thursday and Friday is when it makes its closest pass to these southern Caribbean islands in the coast of Venezuela and Colombia, and then that turn to the north here. But exactly what happens after this point is still uncertain. And so the Greater Antilles, the Bahamas, uh, Cuba, Jamaica, Dominican uh, Republic and Haiti, uh, keep an eye on this, uh, but it's still several days away. This is the day five position on the NHC uh, official track. This is Monday, so there's still a lot of time yet to watch this system, but be prepared in case it comes your direction in this area here. Uh, lots of time yet to watch this thing evolve. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.